Jamie and I are both library associates at the library, and we are looking forward to talking with you today. Uh, we have a few goals for today. Uh, we want to show you how to put a hold on an item, how to access your library account, how to renew your items, how to use Connect New York, how to access and use interlibrary loan, and how to request an interlibrary loan article through our database. Uh, we do have, uh, we have an, a number of items in the Rensselaer libraries. Um, we have books that you get out for 16 week loan. It's a guaranteed three weeks. Um, if there is a hold on the item, we can call it back after three weeks. There's a 75 book maximum with renewals. Uh, we have a number of reading room books, which are on the second floor of the library. These are more leisure reading. Um, James Patterson, Nicholas Sparks novels, uh, books like that. Uh, those are a two week loan, one renewal. We have CDs and LPs. Those are on the first floor of the library. They are a 10 day loan with one renewal and it's a six item limit. And then DVDs are a three day loan, one renewal, six item limit. Uh, we are very flexible with these due dates. So do not, um, do not fret. They are not that rigid. And then I will post this link in the chat after I pass it off to my coworker, Emily. All right, so let me share my screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the library website, which is, um, if you've seen any of our other workshops, our favorite website on the internet. So it is library.rpi.edu. And um, you can see one of our and another recording that we participated in our library open house. This just gives a, a very broad overview of some of the library services. But if we scroll down, we see this quick search box and that's going to be really helpful for looking for. Things like articles or general topic. Um, general topics, um, but if you're looking for like a specific book or a specific journal DVD whatever, we're going to want to scroll down just a little bit to the catalog, which is right here under quick links. And so we click that. And then we get the search box, which looks almost the same as what we see on the front. And it's, um, you can just type in your title or um, your author name or a title phrase um, to find what you want. So I'm going to search for a book. I'm going to search for um, Civil War and Narrative. And it's going to start popping up with uh, suggestions. And sometimes that can be helpful. And sometimes I am looking for something else that it is not listing. <laughs> so, Civil War and Narrative. And it's going to think a second. And then, ah, yes, here it is by uh, Shelby Foote. This is the one I want. So I can see that there are um, three volumes. So, and that it's available. So I'm going to just click on this uh, heading to make it bigger. And then when I do that, I can see lots of things. So the first thing I can see is that all three volumes are available. If somebody had, for instance, checked out volume one, it would just have a little red circle with a line through it. And then um, if, and then you would be able to put a recall on it if you really needed that right as soon as possible. But right now all of these are available, so that's excellent. So I get my pick. I could have all three if I wanted. Another nice thing is that we do have the library stacks are open. So if you want to, you could take a screenshot, you could take a picture with your phone, you could write down this call number right here, and then you could actually go up into the stacks and look at it yourself. Um, sometimes I like to do this because I wanna see what's nearby and see if I wanna check out anything else that's near it. But sometimes I'm in a hurry and I, I just wanna run into the library real quick, pick up my book and then be on my way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that second option, which is just to put a hold on it. So we see this place a hold button. 
we're going to click that. And then let's see if it makes me sign in. Okay, I think it knows. I, I think I didn't clear my cookies, so I think it remembers that I am me. So you have your pickup options. Um, you could pick it up at the Folsom Library, which is the library we're in right now, or the Architecture Library, which is in the Green Building. I'm going to choose Folsom. And then um, I did this one specifically because I knew it had three volumes. So let's say I just want the second volume. I just click that little check mark. But if I wanted one or three or all of them, I would just click the appropriate boxes. And then um, I don't need it for specific dates, but if I did, I'd click that box and then I would um, fill out the dates. Um, but I hit submit. And then we see this green, you submitted one hold request. And so, so now I can return to my search or I can view requests. Um, right now, I'm just going to go to back to the library homepage. And then also, in addition to, to sending us an email, stopping by the service desk, um, sending us a, a, a carrier pigeon, you can also do this chat with a librarian if you ever run into any trouble. And somebody from around the world, no matter what time of day it is, if it's a holiday, anything, um, somebody will try their very best to answer your question. And if for some reason if they can't answer it because maybe they don't have access to everything that we have access to, um, they're going to send us a, um, a trouble ticket. And then as soon as we get in the office the next day, we'll answer it and you will get your email as soon as possible. So, but that's really helpful. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to get to your library account. And it's right here, right next to the catalog, probably my two most clicked links. And so I do that. And you would just sign in with your RCS username and password. And so from here, it didn't make me sign in because it, it remembered me. Um, I can see that I have checked out a DVD. Um, Uh-oh, it's overdue. Oh my gosh, well, we don't have to fret because I'm just going to click this box next to it. And if I wanted to, I could click the whole list down. I could just click specific ones, whatever I wanted, and then just renew items and renew. And then there we go. And so now it's the status has changed. It says due in four days and the due date has changed to be September the 12th. So that's terrific. I can also see my other book down here that I I have checked out um, Dracula, and that's due uh, December the 30th, and it gives me the, the days over there. But I can also see my request, so I can see where I've requested this book. Um, and it does take a little bit of time for it to be ready to pick up because uh, library staff do have to get the request. We have to run upstairs, go get it. And then we have to tell the computer that we got it and it sends out a message at the top of every hour. So sometimes um, it feels like it could take a little bit longer, but, but most of the time we try to be as quick as we can about it. So um, those are how to, how to um, place a hold, access your library account, and renew items. So now I'm going to pass it back to Brian and he's going to show you some other great things. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. So I'm just going to give, uh, give a minute to explain kind of what interlibrary loan is. Uh, so while we do have a sizable collection uh, due to budget constraints and budget limitations, um, we obviously cannot get every item or every journal. So interlibrary loan is a great way to access materials for your research papers, for uh, leisure reading, really for whatever you need it. But we're able to go out to libraries across the country to get items. Uh, this is a great way to expand our pool of resources and to kind of build, almost build a library community where we can uh, help each other out. 
Um, I'm going to, before I do these slides, I'm going to take you to um, the Connect New York website. Uh, Connect New York is a um, consortium we are part of. Uh, it is made up of New York schools from uh, downstate and upstate, and we use a courier system to uh, transport books back and forth. It is a very quick and efficient way to get items that you need. Um, so, there are, like Emily said, our main library site, library.rpi.edu, under Quick Links. As you can see, this is kind of some of uh, the most popular things that you'll need when accessing the library. Uh, it's the fourth one down, Connect New York. Uh, so this is what the Connect New York website looks like. Uh, it's a search bar right here. And for just this example, I'm going to search George Washington. And then as you can see, I got a, a quite a number of results, but I'm just going to click on this first one. And you're able to request it right there. And then I'm not going to go through the process, but you're, you'll click on Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and go through the process of logging in. Uh, Connect New York is great. Um, like I said, it, it kind of expands the pool of resources that we're able to pull from. Uh, a great way to uh, make sure we don't have the item first is to check our catalog. After you check our catalog, you're able to go to Connect New York. And then if Connect New York doesn't have it, which is fairly unlikely because it's a, it's a large amount of libraries, then you'll be able to use interlibrary loan. I'm going to go back to library.rpi.edu. And you can access your interlibrary loan account through the quick links, uh, the third one down under interlibrary loan. Click on it. Uh, you will be logging in with your RCS ID and password. Um, that is the only way you're able to log in. So you don't have to worry about making a separate account. Uh, so this is what uh, interlibrary loan from the user side looks like. As you can see on the left-hand side, you have the main menu. That's this main page right here. As you can see, I have one outstanding request, but it's just a test just to show you. Uh, you can see the transaction number, that 275686 number. That's a good reference number if you have any questions about maybe where the book is at or if you're gonna get if you're gonna be able to get the article or not. On the left hand side, you can make a new request. Uh, this is important because this helps us kind of uh, make sure that we are getting you the correct item. So if you're looking for a book or a mu book slash music score, you would click on this one and fill out all the information. Um, if you are not completely sure about what you're requesting, if you have a few questions, you can always just leave some blank or leave a note in the note field, which is down here. Uh, leaving notes help us to kind of track down the item better and make sure that there's no issues with you getting the item. Uh, so I'm just gonna fill this out again with test, test. Uh, the ISBN is very useful, but also that is not necessary. We can find that for you as well if you need. And then you can submit the request. And as you can see, it comes up with a new transaction number, 275701. Uh, so we are able to request a number of items if you need a maybe a government report or a thesis. Uh, down here under view, you're able to view the electronic articles you've received. Um, that is the only way you will receive articles. You will not receive a physical copy of the article. It will always be electronic. So you can, uh, we highly suggest that once you down, um, once you receive the article, you download it immediately in case something happens. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about the changing passwords or changing accounts because that's, you'll just be using your RCS ID and password. Uh, so just to clarify, uh, if you will search our catalog first, then the Connect New York catalog, and then as the last resort, interlibrary loan is great. A uh, great way to find the item that you need. So I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint for a second. Uh, so most requested items are obtainable. Uh, we have a very, very good track record of um, getting the items for you. Uh, things are 
while we do have a good track record, there are some items that are very hard to get. Foreign theses are tough because libraries in general don't particularly like lending out uh, theses because it's more like they feel that it's their item. Uh, so those are uh, tough, tough to obtain, but especially if the thesis comes from a European university, uh, items before 1900, while all this we are able to get under circumstances, um, items before 1900 are usually tough because sometimes they're housed in the university's archives department or just it's uh, much fewer libraries own items before 1900. And then books that are released within the last few months. Uh, we're talking about the book that came out like last week. You know, if you just saw it, um, you know, book that came out August 31st, 2021, that would be a little tough for us to get because while libraries are probably purchasing the item, they haven't received it. And if they haven't received it, they're not going to be able to loan it out through interlibrary loan. Uh, inter here are some more interlibrary loan tips. Uh, most items requested are free of charge. We subsidize a certain amount for each item. So under most circumstances, the items will be free. Uh, you will always be notified if there are any additional charges. We'll never just, you know, bill you to the bursar or, or whatever. We'll always let you know that there is an additional cost if you're willing to pay it. Uh, and then items that normally require additional fees are a thesis from other libraries, like I mentioned. Uh, at RPI, we charge $35 to other libraries for our theses. And then items that only foreign libraries own, uh, that's usually due to shipping costs. Um, usually uh, foreign libraries don't lend out materials to American libraries. They usually have their own systems over there. And uh, if you are a graduate student or faculty, you can check with your department to see if they cover any additional charges. Uh, and I will post this link here. You can find more tips about requesting items um, here. And then um, items belonging to other libraries. Uh, we are very flexible with our items. If you are a researcher or a faculty member and you need um, you need items for a, a long time. We can work with you on that. We our first and our first job is to serve the RPI community. So there are, it, there is flexibility with our items. On the other hand, library or materials that belong to other libraries, we uh, we have to be conscientious of that the fact that it's their item. So uh, the due dates are not as flexible with that. Uh, some interlibrary loan materials can be renewed while others cannot. And then uh, there's a big label on the front when you uh, check out an interlibrary loan item that will say if, if the item can be renewed or not. And then uh, inquiries, Emily mentioned, ask us 24 uh, seven, the web form on our library homepage, which I will show shortly, show shortly. And you can email us directly. These are our personal emails. And then the last one's the interlibrary loan support. So if you have a question about your interlibrary loan request, you can email that. And then I am going to show you um, how to ask questions. And then I'm also going to show you how to request an interlibrary loan item through our database. And then that will wrap it up. Uh, if you go to library.rpi.edu, scroll all the way to the bottom, there is an email service or reference desk. Uh, this is a good way to uh, ask us questions directly. Um, all of us who are work here, we'll get that email. Uh, you want to put your full name, your email address, your status, and your question. Um, this is great too if you if it's a maybe more of a complicated question, you can explain everything out and then you can submit your question at the bottom. And then I'm going to show you how to request an item through our database. So if you are doing research or writing a paper, um, you'll probably be using some of our databases that's under the research and instruction on library.rpi.edu. Click on database. Uh, for this example, I'm going to go to the IEEE Explorer database. That's one of our more popular databases. As you can see, there's over 5, 5.4 million items here. So for this example, I'm just going to search sharks. As you can see, there are uh, almost uh, almost 360 results. Uh, and you can see here this kind of this locked button. Uh, this is a good way to show if we actually can access the article through a database. 
Uh, for this one, we can't. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm just going to try and click the PDF. Okay, so we don't have access. You can click this button, the Get It at RPI. And this will take you to this page. I uh, want to go all the way to the bottom. Uh, this is actually useful. Say this uh, item was available through maybe a site called Unpaywalled or maybe a free access. You would actually have full text access and it would show you, but for this one, we don't. So you're gonna have to request it through interlibrary loan. Click on this. And then it fills in all the information for you. Now, this is very useful because it does a lot of the work. It puts the ISSN number, it puts the pages, the author. Um, Emily and I always suggest to double check though, in case, um, you know, it, it's, it's always pretty accurate, but there are cases where maybe it's a little off just to double check. And then you can submit the request down there. Oh, sorry. It needs the book title. Just gonna go back and put, And then, as you can see, it goes to the awaiting copyright clearance. Uh, these statuses are primarily just for us, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, if the status says request sent, that means we have sent it out and we're waiting for the response from other libraries. And that's all we have today. Um, like Emily, like I said earlier, we, Emily and I like to keep it about a half hour or so. Um, I see there's a few questions that we will get to. Um, if you have any questions, though, please feel free to email Emily and I. Um, we love helping. We love being a part of this. So um, we want to help as much as possible to kind of assist you with research. And yeah, so I'm going to answer the questions in the chat. But if you have any more, please just write them in. Thank you. And then, Brian, do you want to end the recording so people's questions 